when Horry County wanted to taxi planes to a new terminal, they had to call a cab. Meet the driver on this morning's Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Myrtle Beach Area Chamber of Commerce at 1200 North Oak Street here in the heart of Myrtle Beach. We're focused on the Community Appearance Board and we're visiting with its chairman, Larry Bragg. Good morning, Larry. Good morning. Thank How you, you so Bragg? much for coming in this morning. Thank you for inviting me. And I should have said the City of Myrtle Beach's Community Appearance Correct. Board, which is a very important distinction because obviously not all communities have a Community Appearance Board. No, unfortunately not, but we hope they will in the future. Yeah, it really is necessary, isn't it? It truly is. Mm -hmm. they well, have, uh, they've made some overtures in North Myrtle Beach to realize the importance of it. So I'm, I'm expecting great things out of North Myrtle Beach in the near future. You think that? Uh, I, I'm very optimistic. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. It is. And, you know, Conway has uh, an architectural review board for their downtown, mm -hmm. which was a major step. So mm -hmm. uh, it's coming of age. Around the Palmetto State, the most, most good-sized cities, 25,000-plus, uh, have a community appearance board? Uh, or in some form or another, right. especially if uh, the area has a historic district. Mm -hmm. I would venture to say, though, that Myrtle Beach is, is probably the most well-known and perceived by many people as the most powerful. Is that right? Yes. Wow. Around the state? Yes. Son of a gun, Larry. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. It's a very good deal for the city of Myrtle Beach because Myrtle Beach is maturing as a city and the Community Appearance Board has quite a bit to do with that, so mm -hmm. I'm very pleased. Real quick about yourself, Larry, are you originally from the area? Uh, no, my mother was from South Carolina. My father was Georgian. I was born in Georgia, but I've been here over 40 years now. Over 40 years? Yes. So you're probably a local by now. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. It feels that way. In, in Myrtle Beach for all 40 oh, yes. years? Or is that right? The Air Force brought me here originally. I saw that you were a veteran of the uh, U.S. Air yes, Force. So when I got out, I couldn't think of another place to go, even though I love Savannah, where I was born. I right. decided to stay here, and I'm glad I did. That's fascinating. The air, for viewers who may not have been here when the air base shut down in 93, right. did it really have a big impact on the community? No, it really didn't. Uh, Myrtle Beach was very unique in that it didn't suffer tremendous financial loss like a lot of communities do. Uh, and many of us uh, who were serving on the chamber and various boards and commissions around the city, while we loved the Air Force, we loved all that it did, and we, we missed it emotionally, it was really the right thing to happen uh, mm -hmm. for the future of Myrtle Beach. Mm -hmm. So I, I was very pleased. The only thing we're really lacking now, because all the people want to come back who are veterans here, we would be very well served by Veterans Hospital here, I think. That's interesting, the little facility that's an extension, I guess, of it's Charleston. It's magnificent right. what uh, uh, Henry Brown was able to accomplish yeah. out on the, on the base. But, right. Uh, as far as something like Ralph Johnson in Charleston, we really could use something like that oh, here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I was hoping the old base hospital at one time was going to be utilized, but right. that wasn't meant to be. So. I'm still optimistic. The opportunity for the Robert uh, Spear facility for yes. nursing and allied health there now, yeah, it'll at least still be put to good use. I, I'm, I'm very glad of that. Yeah. It's, it's interesting to go out there now and see the barracks gone in the dining hall right. and where my office was. It's all torn down <laughs> now, but it's, uh, it's fascinating seeing the growth with Market Commons and all, and I oh, think yeah. the, the brightest chapters of Myrtle Beach are still to be written. Are you? How long were you in the Air Force, Larry? Uh, five years. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you were on the Myrtle Beach Air Base for oh, yes. a good bit of that. And then after I was on Myrtle Beach for the whole five years, I didn't realize it, but when you got out of the basic training, then you went to tech school, the Air Force had something called a dream sheet, and you were able to put down where you'd like to go. Mm -hmm. And I put down Honolulu. Uh, Shaw Air Force Base and Myrtle Beach and got Myrtle Beach. Is that and right? And stayed the whole time because I operate a computer and 
everyone kept getting discharged who knew how to operate it, and it was about as large as this room. So, <laughs> oh, your computer oh, was? Oh, computer no. was. The, uh, the keyboard was probably three times the size of this coffee table. Oh, come on. Yes. Why? Uh, that's what you had 40 years ago. Now, how did you operate a keyboard that's three times the size? Have you ever of seen the... someone play a church organ with all of the buttons that you're having to push and go around? Uh -huh. It was similar to that, and right. then you had a separate room with computer discs made of paper or mylar right. uh, that read the information. You would have to do data processing punch cards. It was all very uh, prehistoric yeah, you know, as far as what you have today, but it was fascinating. And I remember someone saying, the computers are your future. And I thought, if I can ever get rid of this sucker, I don't want to have anything else to do with them. And it's probably a phase, so I right. said no. You know, yeah. So I got out of, of the computer operating business, and to my regret. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You could have been another Bill Gates here in the uh, Rocky well, Cherry. Yeah, you know, the money not. would have been great to have given away, as he has done. He's, right. he's a magnificent human being. He really has. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about philanthropists on the local level, and we had a guest with us recently who's helped with a group of other uh, dedicated nonprofit folks uh, form a chapter here of the uh, Association of Fundraising Professionals, mm -hmm. I believe, and I think they do an annual event to honor the philanthropists right. of the year. But you think about so many folks in the ability to give back and continue to give back. Oh, they do. And in, in spite of everything, I'm still optimistic that people are basically good mm -hmm. and they want to help those uh, less fortunate. So it's, it's, uh, it's reassuring at times when bad news hits us all as it does, you know, sometimes on a daily basis. But I'm still optimistic. What you have it? to be. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Very definitely. What was it about the Myrtle Beach area in particular, Larry? You know, think back to back then when you could have right. gone back to Savannah, which right. was a pretty mature community then, mm -hmm. and been back there. What was it about the Myrtle Beach area that to make it? It had a magical feeling. Really? It was a very small town. If you wanted to shop, there was a tiny little Belks. Uh, in the downtown area. Right. There was uh, Sears where the uh, pizza place is where you could go in and look at appliances. Uh, any major shopping you'd go to Wilmington or to the mall in Conway. Uh, one radio station that really was great in the summer but during the winter it would cut off at six o'clock. <laughs> uh, the newspaper, you know, would be uh, a weekly, right, then it would yeah. go to two days, and then right. as the time went by. Uh, actually seeing after Labor Day the boarding up of the restaurants and all, and the turning off of the traffic lights on the boulevard, it was just a magical experience. You could get out and walk the boulevard, walk the beach, and feel perfectly safe. Right. Go to Sloppy Joe's and eat lima beans and rice at two in the morning if you wanted to. And that feeling despite all our growth, is still here, I think. There's still a magical feeling about Myrtle Beach. Those are great words, Larry. I don't think I've heard anyone uh, share those words. I mean, folks that have been here a long time. Jack Thompson was with us recently, and to hear him talking, and clearly he's seen the area, yeah. much like yourself, obviously many more years than you, but I hadn't heard him share uh, use those words, that magical feeling. For someone coming out of Savannah, which is yeah. oftentimes many consider a magical city. It, it is, and it still is. Right. And it will always have a special place in my heart, but Myrtle Beach is home. I wouldn't have met my wonderful wife had I not come here, so right. uh, I wouldn't have met all the great people yes. and seen the growth of Myrtle Beach. So. Mm -hmm. Things happen for a reason sometimes. I think I saw that you and your wife have a, it's a real estate company together? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's exciting. Was it, is it uh, clearly the growth opportunities, and that's a great uh, segue into real estate. That, that opened the door for you to look into real estate? Well, not really. <laughs> oh, the, yeah. uh, after getting the computer bug out of my system, right. I still didn't know what I wanted to do. So I went out to Ori Georgetown Tech, and it right. was, you know, in its infancy. Oh, yeah. And there was a course called Hotel, uh, Motel, Restaurant Management. Right, which there still is. There is, yeah. and it's yeah. a magnificent Jay program Rowe now. and the folks out there. But it wasn't just cooking. It was public speaking. It was English. It was math. I mean, it was everything for right. two years. So I thought, well, that sounds fun. So I did that for two years. Uh, then I got out of that, and I thought, no, I don't want to 
work in a restaurant. I did that in you know, my early teens, and I don't want to be a desk clerk. So someone then finally suggested, well, what about real estate? Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's how it started. It sort amazing. of fell into it. Yeah, it's amazing how many folks find real estate in the area. I was at a restaurant recently upstairs visiting with the owner there, and there was a FedEx a driver who used to work there who said he'd now started a class right. out of the Fortune Academy. Last week, we were actually out of the CCA, at the I Coast Guard Association of Realtors, and had Charlie Brendel and Larry Biddle and some right. fun folks. But to be out there at one of the classrooms of the Fortune Academy and to see their operation out there, it's amazing. It is, and the growth of that because uh, my wife was one of the uh, main organizers of the Myrtle Beach Board of Realtors for the things that grew out of that. Right. She was the first female uh, realtor uh, that had her own business. In Myrtle Is that Beach. right? And that's been fascinating now because now the females outnumber the males. <laughs> uh, but it's fascinating to hear the stories because she started before I did when you had you know, maybe 20 members of the board. Right. Uh, now you have thousands. Oh, yeah. Uh, it used to be if you didn't have a real estate license, you've only been here in, you know, 72 hours. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but it's fun. And yeah. you get to meet great people and right. make some lifetime friendships. Absolutely. Of course, much of our focus today, and I hope you'll consider uh, coming back to be with us tomorrow. And I'm glad you mentioned the chamber when you were active, even coming out of the Air Force. I think I saw you'd served uh, as a vice president and treasurer. Was yes. that a, the Myrtle Beach Area chamber? chamber? Yes. Is that no. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot going on with Ashby Ward. Ashby uh, was the, uh, we didn't call him the president, president of that yeah, time. Right. He was the executive vice president of that okay. time. Okay. Yeah. And yes, we were over on. Uh, King's Highway, where the Chick-fil-A is now, and right. that was probably early to mid-80s, mm -hmm. uh, and it's been fascinating now to watch the chamber mature. Everything oh, yeah. is coming along. It really is. Uh, at the helm of this chamber is Brad Dean, who I think does an absolutely magnificent job. Oh, yeah. And uh, he's certainly a crown and jewel of Myrtle Beach now, and I, I think if anyone thinks he's going to run for the border, you know, call me and we'll... <laughs> the out oh and yeah! Get him Stop that! Right? He, he's wonderful. He'll be with us here on Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah. We're excited to, to get him in, and then later this week, Vernie Dove will be with us uh, to Great wrap guy. the week up. Who, Great like guy. yourself, have been active volunteering for the chamber, and uh, a lot has to happen. Of course, in reviewing some of the amazing awards you've gotten in the area, I think Vernie's gotten a couple of them as well: the Sun News Citizen of the Year at one time, the Volunteer of the Year from the City of Myrtle Beach, and uh, obviously you've got on and on, the alumni of the year out there at your alma mater at Orange Georgetown Tech, mm -hmm. which is tremendous. Man of the year. How many folks can claim they've been man of the that year? That was a nice honor to keep the uh, South Carolina beautiful. Yeah, That's tremendous. That was very nice. I think I saw there you had served as their president yes, at one time. Uh -huh. Is that during your tenure, overlapping tenure here with the City of Myrtle Beach yeah. Community Parents? Yeah, Board? that was with um, uh, Governor Riley. I went through Governor Riley and uh, Governor uh, Carol Campbell, right, and then a bit with Governor Hodges. So mm -hmm. those were very nice appointments, and we established quite a few boards around the state. So yeah. it was it, it was fun. 